You can now shoot entire movies in your living room and turn them into epic cinematic scenes using nothing but your own computer and this free AI workflow. And to prove it, I'm going to walk you through all the steps necessary to create a full short film using this technique, which I'm going to show at the end of this video. The workflow does all the heavy lifting, transforming your character and making sure that the acting performance stays exactly the same. In the process of creating this short film, I also implemented a bunch of features like the option to add custom faces or the original face back onto the generated video for full character consistency or the option to upscale your video with AI. So in this video, I'm going to share my workflows, show you how to set them up and explore all the amazing things you can do with free AI video models. These past few months have been incredible for open source AI filmmaking with new video models dropping pretty much every week. From day one I wanted to make a full short film using one of these models, but first we need to pick the best one for our purposes. We have these four options at the moment. LTX video is super fast. At low resolution you can generate video faster than real time. Unfortunately, this happens at the price of quality and while it's very promising, it currently lacks tools to make the output controllable. While we can input a starting image alongside the regular text to video workflow, we'll need to use a little trick called RF inversion or unsampling for video to video workflows. But this isn't quite precise enough to fully capture and transfer our acting performance, at least not yet. Mochi1 by Genmo is another open source AI video model. The research model features pretty good prompt adherence and its quality is a lot better than LTX Studio. But it's also much slower and we pretty much have the same limitations as with LTX Studio. To work with an input video we still need to use that unsampling trick. And while you can get some pretty decent results, you'll have to fine tune the settings for every single shot. Together with a lower speed it would absolutely take forever to generate a full short film that way. While I was already working on this video, Tencent dropped another new AI video model called Hanyan. It's producing the best quality I've seen so far for open source video models, but right now it has the same limitations as the other models. We can sort of transfer acting performances as demonstrated here in this workflow, but the precision is not quite there yet. Still, these are some pretty promising results. Kijai is the one who implemented most of these models into ComfyUI and it's actually become quite a running joke in the AI community that he doesn't just implement these models in about a day or so, he also makes them run much more efficiently and a lot faster. Hanyan, for example, officially required 60 gigabytes of VRAM. But well, KJ made it run on a 4090 with 24 gigabytes and I think now it's even down to 16. Still, it's pretty slow compared to the AI video models and we still lack that control that we need to create a full short film. But this is where KJ's next implementation comes in. I'm talking about the one for Korg Video X. Since it's a bit older, people had some time to create some amazing things for it. There are now LoRa's available for different styles, plus there's one that enhances quality without slowing down the generation process, but the real game changer here is the ability to use ControlNet. ControlNets are a tool to allow for full control over the AI image generation process using only specific information extracted from the original image. So for example, if you like the composition of your shot, but you want to give Korg Video X more freedom to fill out your scene, you could use something like a Kenny control net. This one will extract outlines from your image and use them to guide the new image. This one is perfect if you want to keep the structure and camera movement of your scene, but you don't want, for example, the color information to influence your scene. But for my short film, I wanted to turn myself into a completely different character with a, a new facial structure, for example. But by using a Kenny control net, we're not giving Korg Video X the freedom to add these elements. Take a look at the head and the beard here. Since we're giving it a fixed composition to work with, it just doesn't really work. But there is a solution. The open pose control net extracts the skeleton and facial features of your character in a matter of seconds. And using it, we now have the flexibility to turn our character into anything we want. And adding the head is not a problem anymore. Now the acting doesn't seem to be as precise as with the Kenny control net, especially in wider shots. We could build like a mask setup to isolate the hands and face and extract only the Kenny lines for those areas and this works really well, but for my short film I went with a different approach. I used a tool called Live Portrait, which swaps the original acting performance back onto the generated video. 
So this is the basic workflow and I combined all of these tools and options into one automated workflow inside of ComfyUI. After you installed ComfyUI and the ComfyUI manager using the official guide, links in the description, you just need to drag and drop the workflow file into the interface and it will load up. Now you can see that there are a lot of missing custom nodes, but to install them you can just click on manager and install missing custom nodes, select all of them and click install. And when you now restart ComfyUI, it takes a while to install, but then you can see all the models are here. If you want the straight lines, you can go to settings, light graph and switch the link render mode to straight. But when you now try to run the workflow, you can see that there are some red nodes. So first of all, let's download this clip model right here. You can do that by just going to the manager, model manager and search for clip. And I'm using this one right here. Once that's downloaded, you can hit R to refresh ComfyUI and select it here. Next, we need the LoRa, but for now I want to deactivate this one using Control B. And now we can load in a video that we want to transform. Click Q prompt. As soon as it reaches this node, it will start downloading the correct model. This will probably take a long time though, because the model is pretty large. I first created the full short film using only the basic Kark Video X um, model. But then I stumbled upon this LoRa here that makes the quality of the video generation much better. So make sure to get that one as well. Just go to files and version and make sure to download this one. Once it's finished, you can see in your ComfyUI directory, ComfyUI models that a Kark video folder has been created. Create a new folder called LoRa's and paste in the LoRa that we just downloaded. Now we can click R to refresh ComfyUI, activate this node using Control B and select the LoRa right here. We need another upscale model. We can also get that in the model manager. So just go to model manager, search for upscale. And for this one, I'm just going to use the ultra sharp. Again, click R and select it in the node. That's all you need to do to use this workflow. So let me quickly walk you through it. It's basically a two step process. In this first group up here, we create the actual video. And then in the second group, we have the option to use live portrait if the acting doesn't transfer as nicely as we want. You can deactivate the second group if you don't need it up here by using this bypasser. So if you click no, you can see all the nodes inside of that group have been disabled. But let's turn that back on. We are working from top to bottom and left to right. So let's start on the left here. These are just the models that need to be loaded. So make sure that you have the same ones as I have. And for the video demonstration, I'm actually enabling sequential CPU offload. And this will just reduce memory usage a lot, but will also make it a lot slower. Next, we can use the load video node to upload a video. Up here, we can select how many frames we want to load. Officially, Kark Video X has been trained on like around 48 frames, but we can also go higher. In my experience, you can also go to like 64 without any problems. But since this is a pretty limited number of frames, I also added the option to select every end. And what that will do is it will load only every second frame and in the end automatically interpolate the missing frames so you have the original frames again. And here we have the option to skip the first frames if you want the generation to start somewhere in the middle of your video, but I don't want that so I can just deactivate that. And if we now click Q prompt, you can see it loads in the frames and it also displays how many frames we have in general for our video and how many we are loading. And of course, the number that we are loading has to be smaller or equal to the maximum frame count. Otherwise, you would get an error. So if this number here is higher, you can just reduce the frame number up here. Down here, you can set the resolution of your video. Um, you can also go lower, you can also go higher. That depends on your GPU, but I recommend starting with this one and seeing how it goes. Next to that, we have our control net set up and we can now decide what we want to feed into the control net. This one will extract the pose. This one will extract the Kenny outlines and this one will extract the depth information. And I've included this switch here so you can decide which one you want to use. The first one will just input the original video for like an image to image effect. The second one will use the pose. 
the third one will use the canny outlines and the fourth one will use the depth information of the video. You can see this gets fed into this Korg video image and code and you can set the strength of the control net down here. So if you get some weird results, try to lower that a little bit to give Korg Video X a bit more freedom. Above that, you can find the positive and negative prompts. To keep the character consistent, you want to give a pretty detailed description. And next, everything gets fed into the sampler and you can choose something like between 20 and like 60 steps. For the full short film, I usually used 40, but 20 will also already give pretty amazing results. I also used the same seed for every single scene that I generated, but if you get some weird results, but you generally like your prompt, you can just switch that seed here and it will give you another variation of the video. This is pretty much all we need to do, but I want to switch back here to two because I want to use the DW pose estimator. Once you selected it and you click your prompt, you can also see a preview up here. And you could also choose if you maybe want to turn off the body because you only want to de detect the face or the hands. And yeah, you can just switch that here. And now I can just click Q prompt and wait for my generation to finish. And yeah, this just worked really well, but you can see I have this creepy laugh here and the character here looks pretty neutral. So in the next step, we can fix that. So now let's activate the live portrait part down here at the bottom. Make sure that the upscale model that you want to use is loaded here. In this case, I'm using clear reality, but the other one works as well. This upscale model here is then used in this part of the workflow that will just upscale your video and you can specify that resolution here. You can also deactivate that using control B if you don't want to use that. This is all we need to do in this group. So Q prompt, though it doesn't really look like smiling so I guess what I should have done to make clear that this creepy expression here is a smile I should have added like laughing and smiling here into the prompt so let's quickly do that this worked really well, so this looks much better than the previous version. Finally, for this workflow down here, you have the option to put these videos together, to compare them, to post them on social media or something. It's what I did on my Twitter account a lot. Uh, people really love to see that. So here you can basically just choose the two videos that you put want to put next to each other. I choose the original input frames. And then you can either choose the generated video or if you're using the face transformation, the live portrait, you can choose this one right here. I can also just put them next to each other like this and it will create a video like this. This is pretty much the full process that I used for every single shot in the short film. But I've been playing around with this workflow and variations of it for a long time. So if you want to get your hands on additional example files, project files and videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support makes these videos possible and you can also get your hands on the advanced version of this workflow. This is completely optional though and for the short film I created I only used the free version of this workflow. But let's take a quick look at what you can do with the advanced version. So you just download the file on Patreon and you just drag and drop it into the ConfUI interface. The top and bottom part are pretty much exactly the same, but we have this additional group here in the middle. And you can do some pretty cool stuff in here. Let's start on the left here. Here you need to load in all these models. These should load automatically. Here you can use any Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint. I'm using Photon 1. Just download the model from this link here and place it inside of ConfUI models checkpoints. Hit R to refresh and load it in this node. Next, we're going to use an open pose control net. You can install this one right here via the manager. So just search for open pose and install this one right here. Below, we need a motion model for animated diff. You can also install that in the manager. Next to that, you have the option to again only generate every second frame and then interpolate the original frame rate at the end. Below that, you can choose to which resolution the image should be upscaled. Next to that, we have the prompts. And I just put in a very long like negative prompt for like low quality stuff we don't want to see. And the workflow will automatically add your original prompt from up here to this prompt as well. So you don't have to again type in your content of the image. Next to that you can see you have a restore phase node from the reactor pack. Now be warned compared to the rest of the workflow the reactor phase nodes are not as simple to install but 
I created a guide that shows you how I managed to install them without any problems. And if you're still having any issues, you can drop into our Patreon exclusive AI community and go to the Need Help channel and ask for help. So below the reactor face node, I'm using the open post control net just to make sure that the facial animation stuff like that transfers. You can switch that out for another control net. Maybe you want to use a Kenny for your upscaling process or a tile. And next to that is the first upscaling step. The scale sampler settings are set to match the model that I'm using, in my case Photon. And using the denoise we can decide how much it is allowed to change the image to add more additional detail. And you can use this upscaler here to add more detail to the scene. Or if you change the prompt here, you can also use it to change the style. But if you use this resolution or even higher resolution, it might not even be necessary and you can just deactivate it using Ctrl B. Instead, what you could do if you want is activate this reactor face swap node here. If you use one, it will just swap the face from the original video. And now you can see it switched out the original wizard's face for my face. But also you could select two here and use an input image. You can see the quality is not that great because the reactor face swap only has a very limited resolution. What you could do to improve it is activate that second upscaling pass here, which will only focus on the face. You can choose a denoise value here. I'm starting a bit lower because I don't like the animative warpiness in the face. And you can see that helped a little bit here. Since we have more outputs with the advanced workflow, we now have to decide which one we want to use in the live portrait process. This one will load the original face performance. And this one here lets you choose if you want to use the original video or the upscale as your base video. The same thing goes for this preview down here. You can really play around with these workflows and make them your own. So once I had all this workflow stuff figured out, it was time to shoot the movie. And I had the idea to shoot like an interview situation with a wizard. This way I could add a compilation of epic action shots as well as sequences of close-up shots allowing us to test the coherence and transference of the performance. To create the character, I only used prompts, so no face swapping like in the advanced workflows. I found that if you use certain archetypes and really give a detailed description of the appearance, the character will look pretty consistent from shot to shot. Prompt adherence is also generally pretty good for this model, and you can even prompt for multiple characters and detailed scenes just by using short natural style language. I'm also pretty amazed by how well the video model understands the context of the action in the scene. Here for example, I wanted the wizard to cast magic from his hands. And using this prompt and this movement, it actually added these effects in the correct moment. Using the quality reward LoRa, I was also able to pretty much always use the first version of the shot, except for like these action shots, where I had to experiment a bit more and had more fun like trying different prompts. For the music, I used Zuno and I transformed my voice using the 11 Labs voice changer. But nothing, nothing prepared me for this. But nothing. Nothing prepared me for this. And finally, I edited this movie in the free editing tool DaVinci Resolve. And without further ado, let me present to you this exclusive interview with Trogus the Wise. So tell us a bit about yourself. I am Trogus the Wise. I've wandered through the realms for centuries, face down armies of darkness, for ancient dragons. But nothing, nothing prepared me for this. What could be more challenging than dragons? Dragons are straightforward. They tell you they're going to burn you, and then they do it. Simple. What happened? But they asked if I know Python, and I do. And then, then they wanted me to install a firewall. The bad news is I'm at Fike. The good news is I'm in front of the chanting birds. 